I gotta know what's upstairs. Our house. We live at the baseball card connection. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. No. Our house is upstairs. Is that we're small town city slickers? I mean, can I sleep here tonight? Like, absolutely. Oh you're, my god! You gosh. actually are sleeping at the baseball card connection tonight. I'll be like, let's go up and watch a movie, and he'll, okay, and then I'll take a box of cards up, and he'll start sorting and pricing, and I'll be like, no, like, no, let's wow. cut it off. How many cards would you say are in your library right now? I would say probably. The last time we counted boxes, we were over 10 million, considering that was a few years back. I'm gonna guess maybe we might be up to 12-ish. Do you think you can climb up to Rob's 40 million? I don't know what I would do with 40 million. Sport, year, brand, chronological, alphabetical. That's just kind of how we do it. I just, I, I understand card craziness. I just don't understand why this was so big. It was hard to understand. A lot Definitely. of it was hard to understand. <laughs> Honestly, we were at a, a different store one time and Lisa wanted to pick up a particular bear and a lady came down the line and literally knocked her down. You? Me, yeah. yeah. For one of these. Literally oh, knocked her yeah. down. And at that point I had a discussion with her and I said, I don't think that this is what I wanna be dealing in. So we gradually phased them out and that was back when they were really hot. John and Lisa are already putting me to work. Oh, good catch. You're helping us. Thank you. Get inside. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. Man, it sounds like Rob. 313 West Jefferson Avenue. We're going to click start. We'll get there at about 1144, which is beautiful. Well, we're on our way to Effingham, but we had to make a last minute stop. We are at a dairy cow farm. I had to see what they're up to and, you know, just take a little pack break, a little cow break. We open some packs and we're gonna go see what's going on over here. All right, when they ask what we're filming here, we're gonna tell them we're at the History Channel. We're filming about cows and the men. I can't even say it. We're going inside the robot barn. Right here? Even further. When I've seen cows, I've always thought they were white and black, but these look like deer. What the heck? Hello. Hello. Hi. This is what the, this is what the fish feel like in the aquarium. We just made it to Effingham, Illinois. Energy drink here, a little Celsius, and we got a little Diet Mountain Dew. What up? And now we're gonna call John and Lisa and tell them we're about five minutes away, so Super pumped to be here. Hi, this is Lisa. Hi, Lisa. This is Jay from Mojo Sports. We just got into town. Hi, this is Lisa. Lisa, can you hear me? <laughs> Let's try that again. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We are so excited to have you as well. We will meet you at the front door. So John and Lisa have own this card shop for almost 30, 40 years, and we get to go tell the story and chat with them and see their take on the hobby and see their amazing card shop with over 10 million sports cards. Are you guys ready? Come with us, let's go. We made it to Baseball Card Connection here in Effingham, beautiful community. It's very windy today. Safety first. Just so you know, they're honking at Lisa, not Mojo. She's pretty popular <laughs> around here. So. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine. <laughs> We're so glad to be here. I mean, this is just, we've heard so many things and we can't wait to tell the story. Well, right, thank you well, for coming. Yeah. We yeah. appreciate Thanks for it. Coming. Thanks for coming. Yeah, We're excited. happy to have you. You're the first husband and wife combo that I've ever seen at a card shop. How did that even start? Who started the shop? Who, I mean, who's the, who got this going? John did. He started when he was about five years old. Him and his brother started collecting cards. We started dating when I, we were about 24 or 25. I had a job, he was doing this. He started up his own little card shop and I was unhappy where I was at working and he just asked me to come along and join him and I quit my job that day, joined him and we've been together ever since. I believe so, the first question was, was how are we going to eat? 
because you know <laughs> she wasn't she had never had a job where was, you generate your own paycheck you know that's oh. that that's and, and that's what entrepreneur entrepreneurs do you know they go out in the world and you know you have to create your own paycheck and I and it's not that we're selling something it's like we feel like when people come here and spend their money they're putting value on what we've created it's not necessarily like hey um, I got this for five I'm selling it for ten I can't wait to make five dollars it's more of the system we built and just people come here because it's fun to be here and I knew nothing about sports when John and I started dating absolutely zero so Everything I've learned is just through him and just being here for the ride. And it's the happiest I've ever been in my entire life, being here and working with him. And John and I are literally, I don't want to say a strange couple or odd couple, but we are literally together 24-7. We sleep together, we live together, we eat together, we work together. And people are like, how do you guys do it? And it's just, we're best friends and we truly love each other and we truly enjoy what we do. All right, we have breaking news. Breaking news that smaller card shops in the area are closing up shop early to come and see Mojo and hang out at Baseball Card Connection. There we is go. Is that not an honor? That's cool. I mean, when I, my first look in here, it's it's the room is filled with wax, cards. I mean, it's all so organized. I mean, everything is just in its place. It's just all the hard work that this crew does. I mean, they don't stop and a lot of times we don't really tell them, have to tell them what to do. I don't think we've ever had to tell somebody to get back to work. They're, they just always have their head down in the grind. I've never seen a sports ticker <laughs> inside a card shop before. This is, I've never seen something like this. According to the people that we purchased that from, we are the first card shop to put it in a store and it just it's up to the minute news which you know can be a valuable thing when you're yeah. dealing in trading cards trading cards are up and down up and down and we like to know what's going on i need you to pull the 1985 tops baseball how are we getting that down okay so that one's going to be up way high so we're going to have to get a ladder here so right there on the end your ladder we're going up high did you have to pick one on the top i had to see i mean i can't i personally thought i could reach do. it but i couldn't yeah. do it so that's what we're going to do look at this 85 baseball, it's crazy. And you guys put it chronologically so you, it's easier for the customers it's, to find. It's, it, the customers kind of learn the system. So yeah, it's very easy to find. I mean, if you know your ABCs and one, two, threes, then you can um, figure out where stuff's at pretty easy. What's your top seller out of all these, if you had to pick? Um, I would say uh, we sell everything. A lot of people come in and they want the older stuff. The older stuff, you know, there. some people will say, well, you're getting in the junk wax era. Well, that's true, but I mean, you know, you buy some of these boxes and pull out Jordan short print or something like that. We're, we're not gonna pull out, I guess we could pull an autograph. We're not gonna pull out probably a $10,000 card out of here, but I love these studio cards and collectors do too. So it's not always all about, you know, the hobby boxes that are $500. We cater to mostly collectors and we sell all of that stuff too, but we have it all. We have the new and the old. The guy buying the $29.95 Chronicles draft, he might have more fun than the guy opening up the $700 box. So you guys are trying to cater to everybody here. We do. We so you cater to the do. high end collector, the kid collector, the true collector. We do it all. We do it all. And we don't decide like, Hey, what, this is what you should collect. We just carry it and we let the customers decide. Now we can dictate our inventory because we know our customers. We know our sweet spot for trading card boxes is probably into the 50 to $200 range. That's where a lot of our clientele falls and tons of the cheaper stuff too. And then probably a little bit less of the real high end. Showcases. Showcases, we have on this side of the store, we have eight showcases and they're all nothing but slabs and graded cards or graded cards. So looking in this case, um, I'm kind of looking at a Nolan Ryan down here. It's pretty cool. I like the old stuff. So let me give an explanation of this case. This is a case with nothing but cards that are, they have to be $250. This is $250 up to however high you want to get. Um, they're kind of sorted a little bit in order, so some of the higher dollar ones will be in the bottom. But 
So here's a Nolan Ryan 69 tops. It's 400 a PSA three. Um, there's just all kinds of really good stuff in here. Here's a Patrick Mahone. It's gonna be new and old. This is a P, uh, SGC 10. I believe that one's numbered. We have Kobe rookies. We have old Mike Ditkas. We have a lot of um, PSA 10 Aaron Rodgers rookies. Beautiful Mike Trout on card auto. This card you won't find anywhere. Whoa. See, let's see if you can find one of these. These are crazy. These are 77 tops football cards that were issued in Mexico. They're 77 tops Mexican cards. The story behind them is they were producing them down there in a factory and it was a disaster. The production was all messed up. They were two card packs. One out of every two cards in the pack was literally destroyed with some kind of goo or bubble gum. They said it was the biggest train wreck of all time. And we recently picked up a Walter Payton that graded a 4.5, which if you translate that to a card, that's literally a gem mint 10. <laughs> Those cards are impossible to find. Is this what is this what you're talking about? Like all this stuff on top? Is yeah, that from it's just in, yeah, they're impossible to on find. The corners. Yeah, like look at this one. I don't know what that is. They're so, they just they all just were uh, terribly produced. And these weren't even from. This isn't from sitting in someone's like bag or Who car. Who knows? Or it could have been from a factory too, because there's nothing on the back. Who knows what where that came from? And that's what they were talking about: is the, the horrific production these went through in Mexico. And two card packs. How's that going to work out when you have one on the front, one on the back? They're just going to get destroyed. 68 Mantle. Yeah, we love Mickey Mantle. My son and I had accumulated probably mm, a couple hundred of those in the last two or three years. And wow. market got a little high on them, and we hated to sell them, but we just took that money to use for a different project. So we kind of cashed out. I think after we cashed out, they probably went up another 50% too. Mantle's just been on a roll. When a customer asked, do you have a Cody, any Cody Bellinger graded cards? Well, we know where to go. We're gonna go to the B's. We're gonna see right here what we have. We have a purple, we have a blue, we have a chrome rookie. Then if we have somebody asking about Mookie Betts, we have a Topps um, update rookie, Jim Mint. Who would you say is the most popular slab that you guys are selling? I would probably say we sell, still sell a lot of Cardinal players like Pujols, Molina, and then any hot players that you have going on, like obviously De La Cruz right now is on fire, different players like that. This is our football case. It's probably the least amount of cards we have in slabs right now is football. Um, we just aren't able to buy much in football. Football's kind of hot and wax. It's also hot in singles. We just don't get a lot of football brought into us. Now, basketball has been redone. I'm seeing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the corner here. Um, I don't know if you can see these very well through there, but yep. there's one, here's yep. one. And then we're going, everybody's going to be mixed in just A to Z. We get down here, we've got the Lonzo balls, LaMelo balls. Um, Kobe's SPX promos. Um, then down below, you can see how many basketball slaps we have. We have a lot. Um, just different sections of LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Um, it's just making it a lot easier for us to find them when we pull them out. Down here, we're still doing basketball. Io was an in, um, Illinois player, so we have a lot of his cards. He's one of the real popular players in this area after, since he played for the Fighting Illini. These we just priced. These are pretty interesting. Let's see them. This is our T206 section. So these are all pretty cool cards. Oh, these are over 100 years old. Tell me about these. They, like you said, these cards are just so old. They're so hard to find. So many people collect them. Um, we probably, I'm going to think maybe we've sold 25% of them already since we processed all these. Um, we'll run them through our Beckett.com and eBay stores and in-store. But they just, they, they just, they're so hard to get. And then you have to pretty much authenticate all of them. Um, it's just too hard to 
figure out on your own which ones are authentic and which ones are not. Here's a tray of 30s Goudies. And then most people consider this the Holy Grail. It's kind of nice that the Holy Grail bin is um, flowing over. These are all 52 tops and no, there's not gonna be a mantle in here. Have you ever owned it? I have not. I Would have you ever not. buy it? Maybe raw. I'd like to get a raw one. We would pretty much buy any Mickey Mantle we can get our hands on. What's your dream card if you could have one? Um, I would say probably I would go right up to the top to that Honus Wagner. That card, the mystique around it, it's just unbelievable. But I am a Mantle guy, so um, I, we have a high grade 53 Mantle, but we have not, we do not have a 52 or the 51 Bowman Rookie. Those would be probably two on my list. So Honus Wagner, 51 Bowman Mantle, 52 Tops Mantle would probably be three cards that I'd like to see. Talk about pack selection. This seems like the most popular location since we've been here. I, I would assume that it's like that in every store across America. Um, I know the little boy that was in here when you were interviewing him, he said like, I love opening packs because every pack is a mystery. I've never heard anybody say it's a mystery, <laughs> but that's what he said. And what we do, we, it's very difficult now to stock all the older stuff like we used to. I mean, we have some 86 Donruss, but it gets a little sketchy now. The prices are so high on the early 80s stuff. When we go back and forth, now we're at the 2023, we're at the brand new stuff. So as you saw today, the Donruss was selling like crazy, was it not? Um, so we have the Bowman. We're just going to have everything. We try to stock everything. So we're just going to go down 2023. Now we're merging into 2022, 2021. We're just going to keep going. We're going to hit that gap in the 2000s where nobody really has a lot of wax. And some of the prices are so high, a lot of times we're only going to be selling those products by the box over on the shelf. You're hitting like Pujols, Ichiro Rookies, things like that. The boxes are going to be 200 300 up to $500. Those are the products that we're probably just going to sell by the box. Once in a while, you'll see some out here, like 05 Tops Heritage Baseball. Wow. It's just real hard to find anything old. This is something that I really love, that I'm really into, are the box sets. And some, <coughs> some people might not think they're that popular, but- Why are they so popular? They're just full of star cards, and it might be something that maybe the older collectors are into. These are the 88 superstars. If you start reading off who's in here, you're like, holy cow, Don Mattingly. It's just nothing but like a lot of really good Hall of Famers. Um, a lot of these sets, there's so many of them. Back in the mid to late 80s, you could go into any drugstore and the Revco's, the Walgreens, they all had their own specialty set. Kind of like, say, a Fanatics exclusive right now or a Panini, you know, like a first day box or whatever they call them first off the lines but we keep on going back when you get down there now you see some 87s we have award winners exciting stars record breakers just try to carry a lot of the stuff that nobody else does and we like to be different we really do we like to stock everything we can i remember like these might be a little before your time but the 90 leaf packs this this set off a frenzy in 1990 when these came Why? out it was just something new and there were Frank Thomas rookies and just a lot of star cards and the cart the cards were really cool compared to the normal, you know, cardboardy stock, tops, Donruss, Fleer, really brand. Everybody loved those leaf cards in 1990. Like we will buy packs and boxes of anything. Just have all kinds of weird non-sports stuff. Like these are James Bond cards, um, the sitcom Happy Days. Um, here's country music cards, and you can see where the boxes are sitting. I mean, people buy these all the time. Here's the Beatles. I mean, obviously, everybody knows who Elvis Presley is. We have Elvis cards. Um, these are awesome. The Andy Griffith Show. Desert Storm. Okay, so 
obviously when we got in a war back in the 90s they started producing these war cards desert storm um what these were these are just war cards i mean there's literally generals and tanks and stuff like that not to be confused with the 91 top set that came out that was desert shield um tops issued baseball cards over to the troops they were pretty rare they're very well sought after now these not so much these were more of like just totally mass produced cards that had no limit um i believe they probably took the proceeds of them and you know where it was more of a charity type thing but yeah so you see when people talk about desert storm and desert shield cards you can be talking about junk and you can be talking about some of the rarest baseball cards out there it says sit relax and take a break for a moment ask for assistance and we will get you a drink enjoy okay. so they can just help themselves or we help them and um, we have a little bench over here for them to sit at or moms to sit at or okay. kids or brothers and sisters or a lot of dads that um, are not interested in cards and the moms or just whoever or grandmas and grandpas they can just sit and have a relax why everybody shops um, or if a mom wants a glass of wine I will go in the back and get her a glass of wine and she can Ooh, sit up here <laughs> I like that. so we love just catering to the whole entire family and over here this is kind of what Lisa's idea was Look is at to this. have a place for them just to sit and wait because mom will drop the kids off and give them an hour to shop so Lisa created the dugout the baseball card connection dugout we're sitting on the bench isn't so bad while you're having your drink and reading your Magnolia home magazines and then it seems like a lot of the families are the same maybe the dads and the kids are shopping the moms and maybe the little daughters not or another little kid who's not old enough to be in cards so we got the old school desk man I remember the old those school desk. Does this open up yeah it does oh it my does. gosh this the is old third grade desk. all over again. The old school to. desk that opens up. Oh my gosh. And it's and our little kids. coloring, coloring books spaces. where they can hear somebody sat the other day and colored an that's, Astros jersey. That's actually pretty good. That is pretty good. So, and then typically Lisa will put up a board multiple times a year and kids will sign their artwork and we'll pin them up on a big board. Oh, I like that. That's so cool. So typically, how, how long does somebody spend in your store? Because I could see myself spending three to four hours here. We have people that will come in. Um, literally a few Saturdays ago, we were open from 10 to two, and we have quarter boxes of every MLB team, every NFL team. And we had a guy spend four hours in here. He went through, um, I believe the St. Louis Cardinals. We have four quarter boxes of St. Louis Cardinals. I think he spent the whole day here and ended up spending $2. So he got eight quarter cards, which is awesome. I mean, we, we don't care, we don't have to buy anything. You can just look at cards all day and hang out. But that's what we love about our business. We literally cater to everybody. Everybody that walks in our door, we talk to everybody. Everybody that leaves, we talk to. We, like I said earlier, we just want everybody to feel like family. And that's just extremely important to us. And I think she hits it right on. It would just be hard to, we want to make sure that when you come in, she gave a perfect example, a guy coming, he just didn't have much to do. And he said, you don't mind if I look through these. And then when he bought them, he apologized. He's like, I'm just going to get six. And it's like, that's fine. You can come in any time. The fact that he sat there and just had that experience for that amount of time, and he, he said he appreciated it. He loved looking through all the cards. And That's what it's all about. And we, we, we're trying to build something here. This is what we've built over 30 years. I don't think I can build this and scale it in other places because I, I don't know if I can find the people or train the people. There's only one Lisa. There's only one me. We've got these good people that have worked for us. And I want to concentrate just on this. This is our baby, so to speak. And we don't want to have any more babies. We're too old for that. We got UPS. Is UPS here? Is this the postman? Yeah. All right. Mitch's gonna... Oh, good catch. You're helping us. Thank you. All right, so how does this happen? So what happens now? If you don't want me to slide it all basically to the staff, Say you're new. Yeah, I'm brand new, man. I just 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 got out here today. Wow. He's, tra right. he's training me, and I'm trying to figure this out. So how how many packages do you think you grab from them a week? Oh gosh, over a hundred. Mondays are normally anywhere from 50 to 70. If not how many do we normally hand you at a time, though? Well, you know, five six. Okay. What he's doing. Like
doing like this one feed, at a time. I'm doing feed the hungry. He'll, he'll have this high. He just, he's only doing one at a time. Yeah. I mean, this isn't going to work out. So I'm going to hand you. I'll be a half hour. Yeah. How many? Yeah. What's, a, is it, what's the most amount of boxes he can hold? I think he'll take his, Oh, yeah. They'll take as many as we want to pay to ship. I know that. Well, I'm talking like in his hands, so, like handing him. Like, what, um, what do we typically? We, well, typically, this is like how we do it. See? Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's no <laughs> way that that just happened. But. But it's okay, you can do System. one at a time. We don't want you to get injured here. Get it figured S out. Systems in place. We do that again. I want to see that again. You want to do that again? Yeah, so typically, no, we'll go one higher. We'll oh go my gosh, you got to be kidding me with that. No, 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 no. Oh. Looks very similar to Rob's kind of card library. This is typical when you, you're going to visit some of the older stores that have been around a long time. A lot of them have stores on Beckett.com and a lot of us will have 10 to 40 million cards. They're all organized by year, brand, sport, and so on. And we're kind of in the baseball section here. So you're going to start out with probably early 50s here. Um, they're turned backwards because they're sorted by their numbers. So this is a... Sherm Lawler, VG to EX. So as we go down, um, let's just grab a random box. So now we're down into the 87s, but you'll notice they're not really all junk wax cards. You see Inserts. 87 Richmond Braves, Rochester Red Wings, SCW Lithograph, Southern League All Jennings. It's all in alphabetical order, chronological order. Tidewater Tides, Tigers Cokes, Tops Tiffany's, Toys R Us Rookies. So we pretty much specialize in the oddball, the weird, a lot of the things that different that most stores don't have. Bring into our inventory just as many cards as possible because we think that every single trading card has a value. Craig Wilson is obviously somebody's neighbor. Somebody needs this card for a set. He, we get orders all the time that come in and you know a guy will write me and say hey that guy's my son's batting coach and i want to get some cards of him to um, give to him so we just see like a lot of the older stores that every card has a value so these are all numbered out like 100 to 1 right like, right like in right, right. it's in order so you're seeing 77 76 75 4 3 2 1 68 76 tops right here so what we're working on right now that we're getting ready that our customers are going to be pretty excited about is we're going to we're sorting out all of our 1970s cards right now. Just tens of hundreds, probably hundreds of thousands of cards we've accumulated through the years that we're going to bring to the market. We were working on 78s. So you see up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 30,078 tops cards that we're gonna sort out. Wow. And that's where I need my team down this aisle here. They do a lot of the sorting. A lot of sorting. Matthew here at one point, he sorted 36,000 1986 tops cards. The one mistake he made, he did it in his mother's kitchen. That was probably not the best place to start that project, but. Was your mom mad? A little bit. It was there for a while too, so. So I'll show you what the finished product looks like. That's it. Like right here, for instance, we've been working, they've knocked out these 81 cards. So when an order comes in and these are 1981 Fleer, in this box is just cards number one to 113. So order comes in and they need card 412. They're gonna come to this box. It's gonna be clearly labeled and they'll be able to get in here and pull this card out. That's why we have an order cart that we roll around. I'm just kind of winging it here. Most people so, would toss these cards away. They might, yeah. And Some you guys might. utilize value on every and card. And when they toss them or put them out for sale, then we buy them and we sell them. John Montefusco, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's just keep going on. I don't know how many. So, you know, we might get an order and he might be doing an autograph signing or something. You've got to have everybody needs cards for different reasons. And that's why we have them all. I think what a lot of people do, they just throw their cards aside. They don't have systems available to put these cards out for sale. And we do so. And but we're committed to doing all the work we've built 
a card shop over 31 years. This is 31 years of work. Mm. I'm not sure that somebody would want to come in in 2023 and it would take so much time and labor to build a system like this. Once you got it started, you could, but as uh, my friend Rob always says at Burbank, I mean, go ahead, build it. <laughs> See how long it takes. We're always adapting to the market. Like what are people buying? If we're not getting any orders for these cards, we just don't need to be doing all this work. We can target what's selling. So we have pulled out of our system what Lisa's talking about, some of those junk wax year cards that just may not be worth sorting. And that's why we're moving back and we will definitely, we're not throwing out a box of 78 Tops Commons. People get place orders for those cards all the time, even in the mid 80s. So that's why we are focusing on this. So you gotta work smart. You gotta have the cards, number one, but you also have to work smart. You have to know your market, know who's buying and know what they want. Because the last thing we wanna do, I don't wanna put our team on sorting um i think around the corner i could show you we might have a hundred and fifty thousand ninety donruss cards i'm not really sure that's the project we want to focus on right now one brand that comes to mind that always seems to pop up is 90 pro set football oh it my seems gosh, like yeah. when we get football orders in so my brain just says 90 pro set 90 and that's like uh, we probably need to get all those rounded up and and resort we call it resorting because you'll see here 83 Donruss, one to one, 199. You have your two to four, your four to six, your 660. But then you look above, see how we have more of them now? So what we'll do is we'll sort those out, we'll inner sort them together, and then this will just be redone and we'll reprint these. Okay, that makes so sense. So for example, that like sense? right here, here's Let's 85 see. tops. Okay. So here's 85 tops that are all sorted. So oh, these are up. all in number order, oh, cool. 109. Sure, this is cards one to 109 and there's 3,000 of them. Now, if I do the math, I'd believe that's what, 30 cards per person on average? So it, so. it just go, here's all the boxes, 85 all the way through right here to 792. These are all sorted in number order and multivariants and these are all listed on the Beckett website and they're also listed on eBay. But then if you come over here, it just keeps wrapping around. These are these boxes from here up are all wow. 85 tops, Jeez. but none of these are sorted. Okay. So it and this is not a priority. Good. So at this some point extra. these are all extra. So at some point when we get there, we hope to have all these 85 tops like this. So you would be adding about 45,000 more into the 85 tops. In Actually, your way. the 85 tops, these probably went home with Matthew that works for us. And these were all on his mom's yeah, kitchen counter. Yeah, we just counter. told him that. He did the oh. 86. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, did, yeah, yeah, he did the He did the 85s too, but I think he smartened up and moved those to the basement. So if you go this way. Oh, you got packs too. Oh, I remember opening this. Sorry. All right. <laughs> so this is all basketball in year but so you ask about like valuable cards. cards like i'm talking cards over 300 dollars like maybe 50 dollar rookies Are they you... could be they're they're there in here, be some in here but most likely game. they're in the showcases out in the okay. store that makes sense and then this is basketball so you've separated baseball basketball worse in is there a football section as well football is going to be so on the opposite side 86 here. Fleer. yeah so these are all in year order so if you go here's oh, 86, 86 Fleer. 87 Fleer. so you guys got a couple and those are valuable i mean the the set's iconic because of Jordan. so these right. are on um our beckett and ebay store and then we're there's not very many there but there'll probably be some up in the showcases and there's quite a few graded ones i know matthew just processed a lot of 86 87 Fleer graded yeah. It was the big boys too. He processed a lot of the PSA returns. How do you determine what goes in that box and what's gonna go in a showcase? Usually it's going to be, it, it depends on the player. Um, like if we have a Patrick Ewing rookie, it's going in the showcase. If it's a $30, let's say it's a Adrian Dantley, 
or someone like that, it's going to stay in the box. It's going to be filed in here. There, There's probably, like Lisa said, cards that are hundreds of dollars in the system, but they're not players that we expect to sell in our retail store. That makes sense. They're not LeBron. They're not Jordan. They're not, you know, it could be a luminous triumvirate rare insert that's $75, but it's like a Jason kid. But We're not going to waste our showroom space on that particular card. It's going to get filed in the system. So, um, Kobe rookie cards, like we might have quite a few out there, but there's still going to be Kobe rookies here and valuable Kobe rookies. So Jay, what we're looking at, at here is what we call the files. All of our star cards in alphabetical order by player. So we're going to start off with some All-American Girl Professional Baseball League cards. They fell as the first slot. So we've got Hank Aaron, Jim Abbott, Cal Abrams, Jose Abreu, um, Ronald Acuna. So this system is going to run all the way down and all the way back around to this side. How about Mike Trout? So Trout, we're just going to go TR here. Here's some Mike Trouts. So this is a section of Trout here. We currently have, I'll show you in a little while, we have a 3,000 count box of Mike Trouts that have yet to be priced. That's We're a little behind on Mike Trout right now. Okay. But I'll show you how we break down our cards and then our backup system of star cards. Why do we organize by player instead of team here? It, it's more, we do team too, and I can show you that, but it's just based on what our customers have wanted for the last 30 years. It's, it's typically player, player, player a mom will come in with their family and kids and their cardinal fans and they just want molina and pujols so we can direct them exactly where those cards are you know we have everybody players that some people might look at and say why do you have a george sisler file well because we literally have files of everybody who was a star or is a star this is brian Schaus. i guarantee you it's the only brian Schaus um file in the country because he's a local player. He was a teammate of mine in high school. He's from Effingham. So we have files for all the local kids that have come through and we have Hall of Famers, stars, just everybody. Older guys, like I doubt many stores have a Chris Sabo file. Why'd you decide to put a Chris Sabo file in there? We just make files for literally everybody. And as time goes on, Pretty much every player is going to have cards that sell over time. Like a Reds fan might come through here and, oh my God, I can't believe they have a Chris Sabo file. This is awesome. So that's where um, a customer might come in and he might have Cincinnati Reds in his head. We don't necessarily have to say, here's all of our Reds cards. He can go to Pete Rose. He can go to Johnny Bench, Joe Morgan, even a Vager player like the Chris Sabo and find cards in his file. And then when he's done with all these, then we can show him to the Cincinnati Reds box that's cheaper cards, maybe totally vague players, or just, you know, Easter eggs or bargain cards, because we do have a four for dollar, four for a dollar box, a quarter box for Cincinnati Reds cards also. Ooh, manage Ginobili. So here we have Ginobili, Draymond Green, and even like a Tom Gugliotta file. We try to do just stuff that other stores don't do. We want to have stuff that there's nothing better than when a customer comes in and says, man, I was a huge Bulls fan. Do you have any Tony Kukoc cards? And we're like, oh, heck, yes, we do. We have a whole file of Tony from back in the day. So it's just, you know, we try to have everything. We try to say yes as many times as we can to our customers. And we just keep building this up. If we go around to the other side, we're going to be in the football section. And if I show you our back stock, we plan on doubling this. We have probably, I don't know how many, 20 or so right now. And we literally have 20 more that we're working on. So let's say we go to Justin Herbert here. We're in the H's. These are all going to just be random Herbert cards, colors, base cards, rookies, anything you think of. Most of these cards out here are going to be anywhere from like a dollar up to eight dollars. This is 1960 tops, mainly all fresh inventory. Those are 59. And then these three rows are all going to be 1960s. And this is a huge part of our store. Guys come in and sit here for hours and just build their vintage sets. And like I said before, we just don't even feel like we're getting started. Our main goal over time 
we would like to have a huge box for every year in every brand like 60 top 61 62 and we're getting there like this is a whole box 62's got two rows now but it's time everything takes time it's a lot of work and it's a lot of work that nobody else wants to do and that's why we do it we want people to come here and have an amazing experience shopping for trading cards okay jay another thing that makes our store different i think from others is not only do we do the trading cards we do a lot of the general merchandise for all the different sports leagues you're gonna see trash cans of literally every nfl team they're gonna run in alphabetical order we're green bay houston indianapolis kansas city we're into Los Angeles now, Miami, Minnesota. Obviously every team, we come around here, we're gonna start running into the end of the football. And then on this side, we've got baseball and on the other side, basketball. So what we're trying to do here is not only be a trading card store, but we want the sports gifts too. A very huge part of our walk-in clientele here are gift buyers, collectors, people who want to decorate their kid's bedroom with cardinal stuff. Well, we are over here in our huggy section. You can see we just ma mainly carry all the most popular teams, popular players like Steph Curry locally, Tom Brady, um, Yachty would be a local guy, Cardinals. And we have huggies for bottles, cans, slim cans. We try to cover all of them. Everywhere you're going to look around the store, you're going to see different things. You know, just for sports collectors and gift buyers, we have Super Bowl buttons, pennants. People buy a lot of these for parties, little mini pennants. So over here we have kids' wallets, we have pencils. Every little kid that goes to school needs new packs of pencils, especially of their favorite team. We have sports pennants. Tell me about Beanie Babies. The craze. You, each of you hold one up. Let's see them. <laughs> This one was pretty crazy back in the day, wasn't it? That one? The lucky one? Celtic? I don't know. The Aaron Bear? Aaron Bear. Is that what it was? I the think. Aaron Bear? Yeah. I remember. Oh, you know them. But we also have the Bambinos, which were team players. Justice. Justice. Beanie babies, babies back in the day, it was just crazy. We actually used to get some shipped in and people literally just fought over them. I mean, it was nuts. I mean, and we had a section in our store and but you would be surprised to this day how many of these things we still sell. We don't actively have a, a Thai Beanie Baby account or anything. We typically just, you know, we might have somebody walk in with a collection. If the price is right, we buy them. But we sell so many of these still to this day. It's crazy. Well, all the little girls. Who doesn't want a little bunny bear? Did people like buy these thinking like they were going to be worth a fortune? People did. Yes. I believe so. People did. I remember there were little spider bugs selling for $35 and it just, none of it really made any sense. It was a massive craze. Typically like, but, let's just give an example. Let's just say this is the Beanie Baby that everyone wants. It's 1990, whatever. How much are you paying and how much are you selling it for to I make money? I think this one at the time, I think Aaron would have been between, was it 50, 50 bucks, bucks or mm -hmm. higher? $50. I and think it was like $50. Mm -hmm. And how much do you think it is, like how much would it be worth now? Four ninety nine is what you can buy this for right now. We we we, we don't sell. Even, we don't even price them. They're we don't price them. There could be Beanie Babies in here, old ones that are worth quite a bit of money, but we don't even know. We wouldn't even know a good one from a bad one. We just sell them all for four ninety nine. We sell them as cute little plush animals. We don't <laughs> sell them as a collectible. We've had customers come in and they'll sit here for an, an hour and they're checking the tags and dates and all that. So there still are people, and who knows? There could have been a hundred dollar one in here. We don't know. We just sell them. At as this a point, kid's you guys are just trying to move them. We out. don't care. We just want little kids to have them, and oh. that's all we care about. All right. If you start in this corner and run all the way down around the outer part of our store, you're going to see nothing but sports collectibles, like you said, like almost being in a sports gift shop. And everything's going to be sorted by product rather than by team. So, like bumper sticker stickers, lanyards, license plate frames. Um, we sell a lot of decals that people put on their um, cars, more license plate frames, um, pictures to maybe decorate a room, a wall, or just collect um, street signs behind you there. And these are always a big seller. People like to put decals on their cars, you know, just to support their team and show off who they like. 
This whole wall here is all eight by 10 color photos of all kinds of star players. Um, over here, glasses, dishware. We have sports gloves. Does it get cold in California? Not really. Okay, then you probably don't need Cubs gloves, right? <laughs> we'll take them. So as we go down, you see hockey pucks and, and hockey sticks of our local teams, the Blackhawks and the Blues. Um, clocks, more pictures. I don't see a lot of this in card shops. Like, what no. made what made you guys want to do this? You guys really just trying to cater to the true fan that's yeah, traveling and in? Yeah, just to have a place where people can come in this area and all the small towns, not just Effingham, but all the big surrounding areas that just to have a sports store to come through to get gift items. Like I would say multiple times per week, we have people coming in wanting stuff for um, baby showers, baby gifts. We sell so many plush toys for Cardinals and Cubs like Fred Birds and these baby books and different things like that. Um, we have some autograph stuff over here. Um, mainly we have a lot of baseballs. I hate to say we don't have them out yet, but we have a big lot of balls coming out. License plates here. Um, definitely one of the most popular sections. Everybody wants to fly a flag outside of their home. We stock, I think the last time I counted her on my, I'm just so used to looking at my computerized inventory. I believe it's 151 different teams is how many that we carry. Wow. It's baseball, basketball, football, college, pretty much uh, most all the major sports teams we carry the house flag for. So if it's Bears, Blackhawks, Cubs, we have all of them. And then back here is kind of like, you know, a gifty thing or a sign you would put on for a bar, maybe a bar area or just decorating a man cave or a sports room. You'll see just a variety of teams when you look at this wall. Just at first glance, I'm staring at the big red machine from the Reds, Patriots, and any team you can think of is probably on this wall, or we stock one. Back here, it's Lisa's favorite section. Like it's basically this. what we call the Hoobaloo section. <laughs> the island of misfit toys, like starting lineups, things like that. Lisa likes to keep everything new and clean, so... When it comes to little hodgepodge items, she gets a little like, hey, this stuff better sell fast or it's going to be given well, away or out of here. This stuff so. is picked up in collections when yeah. people bring in collections. You know, it's just not ball cards, but they might have some starting lineups that they had picked up from somewhere. And it's not things that we don't necessarily stock or carry, but, you know, we still now we have a place for it. So if it doesn't sell in there, how long we like, what are you going to do with it after? Um, um, typically clean it and maybe send it off to an auction. An auction house or um, we'll just drop it off at Goodwill. And so behind you here, this is more of like autograph photos and we specialize really in the Cardinals. That's kind of the big team around here. Um, we do try to get Cubs in. Cubs are a little harder to get. We always try to have Ernie Banks, Sandberg, players like that. But Cardinals whether they're former Cardinals or current Cardinals, they sign a lot in the areas around here, maybe in St. Louis, places like that. And we just sell a ton of Cardinal stuff. So this whole section here is mainly all St. Louis Cardinal autograph memorabilia. Now, once we get past this table, we're just gonna get into some random stuff. And we always tell people, autographs are definitely not our specialty. Um, it's just something that we kind of do on the side. I mean, this this is great. Don't get me wrong, but that's sick. Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? The slabbed Pujols. It's a beautiful, huge autograph. But it's just not like our favorite thing. I mean, I like autographs. I don't necessarily like to have to worry about if you have a real expensive one. Is it going to fade? Did they use the right pin? To me, some of that autograph stuff gives me a little bit of a headache, but we do have some awesome pieces in here. And I'll never pass on an awesome piece if I'm at the National or somewhere trying to pick something up. Supplies are very important, and I know that you guys have a ton of supplies to protect cards, but you also have, I mean, supplies for everything. We do. We're kind of in the um, section for if you have an autograph football, baseballs. We sell tons of baseball cubes, um, even golf balls, basketballs. Um, football mini helmets we have ball and card displays this is the most asked thing on my youtube channel is where do you find these 
at the right. baseball card connection in downtown. These are the best, right? Right. So <laughs> we have all of them. We have the graded boxes, the two row, three row, four row, five row, and we sell them to you at a discount if you take them unfolded. If you take them flat, you get a discount. The labor. <laughs> so if you look down through here, like I don't think most stores probably have as many as we do. We never want to run out. We always reorder when the stacks start to go down. We've been burning through 400 counts lately. We try to be ready for fluctuations of dis distributors being out of them and things like that. So we try to keep a very, very deep inventory to avoid when we're reordering, we're not reordering albums when we're out. We're reordering them when we're down to like 50. We try to keep those levels up so we don't ever run into outages like that mm. like nine pocket pages if we'll show you in the back we probably have hundreds of them back there we don't ever want to run out so we have all the pages from one pocket up to 15. Um, all of the larger size top loaders for booklet cards mini cards oh you have the 11 by 14 just everything clutch we're going to have everything, the regular rookies, and then we're going to go 55 all the way up to the thickest ones available. If you guys are ever in Effingham, Illinois, come out to the Baseball Card Connection, one of the coolest shops I've ever been to. Drop a like, leave a comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and follow them on Instagram. Their link is down below. Seriously, want to thank John and Lisa so much for this experience. This is one of the best card shops I've been to in my entire life. Unbelievable. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.